Hello everyone, welcome back to the Opulent Life. This is Ozzy here again with a bunch of perfumes in front of you for review. These are all ladies perfumes and they're not unboxings, but I just decided to review the top five women's perfumes in my opinion at least. And these are actually my wife's perfumes that we both kind of uh, bought together. And I really like all of them, so I decided to give my take on these five uh, i consider them my top five you may have a different opinion because obviously sense of smell is very subjective it's the most subjective sense whatsoever so i may like them you may not but i just wanted to give you my opinion maybe you like one of these if yes do check them out on amazon do check them out on fragrance net and wherever you get the best deal, make sure to buy it then from there. First off, you can see the most distinctive of all of these three is the Marc Jacobs Decadence, so I lost in 2015. And right off the bat, you can see how elaborate the design of the bottle is. It in fact, you may be mistaken for an actual purse for this uh, bottle, or should I say a clutch wallet or something. You can see the gold chain and the decorative styling, a faux leather look on the top with a tussle over here. A lot of women may just buy this perfume just because the bottle is so uh, catchy and so flashy. You may actually wear this around and uh, you know pretend you have an actual purse with you. It's that sort of perfume. And I think that was part of the reason why my wife agreed to it. But well, let's come back on the back side. It is a green emerald color bottle and uh, looks small, but it actually has 3.3 fluid ounce of perfume in it. And you can see at the bottom, it says some details about the perfume, the batch code and everything. And uh, yes, like I mentioned, full, it, it's not actual leather. It looks like leather on the top, but it's not. And then you see the chain is so detailed. You can see all the, you know, design elements just, you know, are just screaming, look at me. My attention grabbing perfume. I am an attention grabbing perfume. So let's open it up and see the design. It's very heavy, by the way, guys. It's gold plated and it's, it's very, very heavy. It, it's not actually gold plated, but like it gives you the effect that it's gold plated and that kind of adds to the richness of design. It's very, very imaginative, very uh, unique. Never seen anything like this before. So right off the bat, let's give it a quick spray and see how it smells like now it is a very heavy perfume i must say it is designed primarily for night and evening wear works best in the fall time and the main accords of this perfume are very woody it's balsamic floral it's kind of powdery and earthy as well it's got very decent longevity and it will scream out loud in the crowd if you're wearing this. It is a very, very, uh, kind of almost, I must say, have a very creamy essence to it. It's very nice. And I really fell in love with it once, you, once my wife tried it on in the department store and was like, we have to buy this. I did not buy this from Amazon, guys. I bought this from Macy's. Now, I went against my own, uh, you know, code to buy things on discount but this was just too good could not wait bought from macy's and was at retail price but you guys can definitely find a better deal than i did if you surf online amazon or fragrance net and uh, just smelling it again i can smell you know some italian plum saffron iris some bulgarian rose sandbag jasmine orris root the, you smell a little bit deeper, the base includes some warm liquid amber, vetiver, and papyrus wood. Now, just to give you a little bit of background, this was launched as part of a trio by Marc Jacobs. One was Decadence, it defines a more sexy and sophisticated person. Then they also launched Daisy, which is kind of like the sweet girl next door. And then the last one is Lola, which is kind of like the quirky one. So it was launched as part of a three girl collection and each one represents a pillar of, you know, their personality. So very rich perfume, very nice, very long lasting. And, uh, but definitely I will say this is not designed for, you know, in a gathering where there's a lot of people, this may be very, very strong and it can be offensive to people if you wear very strong perfume in small enclosed rooms. So be careful of that. 
one thing to be uh, mindful of. So that was the Marc Jacobs Decadence. Pause. All right, next we have the Bulgari Rose Goldia. This is one of the more recent acquisitions by my wife. Again, breaking our own rules. She bought this from Macy's at retail. Oh my God, hurts saying that. But yeah, she bought it from retail. She did not wait for Amazon. She does not exactly uh, follow my uh, code of buying perfumes, but uh, you know, that's women. But okay, let's come to the design of the bottle first. It is a 90 milliliter Eau de Parfum. By the way, all of these, uh, most of these are Eau de Parfum. The Marc Jacobs was also an Eau de Parfum. That's why they're a little bit stronger. Now looking at the design of this bottle, very beautifully crafted bottle with this uh, gold accented outer ring then the bottle itself in glass holds the perfume then you have this top cap which has a little bit of a jewelry like look it almost looks like some kind of uh, makeup accessory that's on top of this riveted gold rim over here very nice design elements if you look at the details there's some checkering as well and the bottom you have just the details tells you the batch code and uh, what it exactly is it's the, actually i must correct myself this is actually rose gold accented it's not just pure gold it's rose gold it kind of goes with the name rose gold yeah open the top cap very light plastic nothing spe special it's got this pink opalescent uh, powder like color on its front and back and it has the bulgari name on the top very beautiful. And then we test this perfume out. Give me a light spray. It is very, very strong. Uh, rose, floral, and powdery. Immediately you can smell that and it will stand out very much. Has some woody and musky notes to it as well. That's why I think we both like it because of that reason. It has a little bit of everything for uh, everyone. And I would recommend this for daytime wear, spring, summer, and work well outdoors, indoors, uh, more suited for casual gatherings or parties, uh, not something I would recommend for office wear, very strong. Do not wear this in the office unless you want to attract too much attention. Uh, and that's the same thing for the Decadent. They're both really heavy perfume. They're not uh, designed for casual wear, so. That's why I would recommend be a little bit conservative with your sprays on this too. Smelling it a little bit more, I can smell some musk, creamy, sandalwood, olibanum. It's a very, very expressive, very expensive smell. And it's got a, it's got a distinctive oriental aroma to it. Um, and uh, what else? I can sense some warm elements. You know, it's basically Goldea is is an homage to the gold and femininity inspired by goddess of gold, beauty of the sun. And, you know, it's got some sweetness of the yang yang flowers mingling with the elegant white flowers of jasmine neroli. And uh, it, was, it was launched in 2016 or June. So this is a latest launch. It's not very uh, old. It's only four years before they launched it. There are some other editions of this perfume as well on the market, so check them out if you guys want something a little bit, you like the main notes, but you want something different in the top and the heart, be sure to check those out. Overall, very good acquisition, can't go wrong with it. All right guys, next we're gonna move on to Chanel Coco Madame Royale. Another classic from the house of Chanel, uh, no girl's wardrobe is complete without this perfume in my opinion and this is one of the best ones that she has uh styling on the bottle is pretty plain simple kind of like a champagne bottle as you can see with the translucent top kind of in a crystal like form take it off nothing too fancy but you can see it is still it still has some elegance to it You've got the band of chanel around the rim and uh otherwise pretty clean and clear Nothing fancy, it's got an amber rose, light rose colored uh, liquid inside it, which is the parfum itself. And just coming on to the details of this particular one, when you spray it, it is mostly a summer, spring type. All right, so let's spray it and see what it smells like. 
Let's get a light spray. This a ladies perfume after all. So right off the top, it is uh, strong, but it is not strong in the sense that it would make the other person uncomfortable. It is floral, it is citrus, has a little bit of woody and patchouli flavor to it as well. Overall, a very floral fragrance and ideal for summer and spring. However, this can be worn all year round, evening wear, daytime wear, you name it. It's that type of perfume. It works in all occasions and you don't need to spray a lot of it. Just a couple of squirts is enough and it lasts the whole day. It has very long lasting power and that is one of its key elements and one of its redeeming factors actually. So it's a very rich composition and uh, cons the heart of this perfume is basically jasmine and rose combined together. And other elements include Sicilian oranges, Calabrian bergamot, Sicilian grapefruit, and uh, lychee, some Indonesian patchouli, Haitian vetiver, bourbon vanilla, and some white musk. And this was introduced in 2002, and it is a variation of their very, very famous Coco Chanel perfume, which is almost 100 years old, I believe. And again, this is also made in France, so good quality overall. A must-have, in my opinion, for all women. All right, next up, we have the Jimmy Choo Blossom Perfume, and this is an Eau de Toilette. In contrast to the others that we have over here, this is very, very fresh, citrusy, fruity, and sweet. Not as strong as the others, but a very refreshing smell nonetheless. Longevity is not very good, but overall it's a pretty good perfume. And the bottle itself, very nice design. You can see it resembles a small fruit-like bottle. Some checkering on one side. The other sides are plain. Actually, only the front is plain. The other sides are all checkered. Very nice element. And a crystal-like top. Take it off, the sprayer comes out. Let's give it a squirt, see how it's like. As you can see, my wife loves this so much, it's almost empty. And yes, right off the top, I can have, I'm smelling top notes of fruity, sweet, floral-like scents, and then smelling it deeper, a little bit more rose and freshness in there. And it also has hints of some red fruits along with raspberry, some sandalwood and a hint of white musk, some sweet peas and roses as well. This was uh, launched in 2015 and it's a very recent one, but pretty good and it's great for summertime, springtime, and ideal for daytime wear. Not really an evening nightwear cologne or sorry, perfume, and not, not the best for fall and winter in my opinion but very versatile nevertheless and uh, can be used in multiple occasions. Okay. Lastly, we have Coach the Fragrance for Women and I saved this for the last because it's not my most favorite of the, of the six that I'm, of the five that I'm reviewing right now. However, let's start off with the bottle. Firstly, you can see that right off the bat, this is not a company that specializes in perfume bottle design. So although you do have a very nice coach uh, that's inscribed on this glass over here, that's a nice touch. However, when you come close to the top over here, there's no bottle cap closure. It has been less than a year since we had it and already you can see the gold is fading off. Now, we keep our fragrances in a closet so there's no moisture no heat exposure to you know adverse elements however it is still kind of rusting and that is not a sign of good bottle quality so the bottle quality in my opinion is just subpar they have added a touch of their leather you know purse collection by adding these tags but it's it's, it's pointless if the main bottle itself does not have the quality. This should be the part that they should have focused on in maintaining the color and everything. But it's rusting and that just, you know, adds bad taste to my mouth. Uh, on the back, nothing spectacular. It's all clear. Clear amber yellow colored fluid inside. And on the bottom, they just have the batch coat and everything. So let's give it a quick spray. 
and well this the fragrance is good it's a mix of freshness combined with rose and floral elements it's fruity and musky at the same time which is kind of unique so that's 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 a good touch a little bit more powdery towards the base and some sweetness as well so it is a good perfume it is great for uh, daytime and evening where it's very versatile can be used in a number of occasions i would recommend this in spring and summer but you might actually be able to pull it off in fall and winter i suppose it's not uh, that type of perfume that you can only use in certain situations. It's not offensive. It's not too strong. It's not super light It's kind of right in the middle. It's the perfect balance and Also has now that I'm smelling it for a little bit longer It has hints of raspberry leaves and pink pepper pear and uh, Overall very energetic energizing very fresh, you know kind of the typical all-american girl vibe in it so it's pretty cool and in my opinion it's a good fragrance to have but definitely ball design is very subpar i would recommend something better if you are the one to go for bottle designs so so anyways that was my review of the top five fragrances for women